Okay, let's see here. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm not live yet, but if you watch this video from the beginning, you will hear all of this. I am setting up my computer. Let's see, go to live. Nope, it's not there. Okay, videos. Where, okay, where is it? Did I hit live? Got it. Okay, um, always forget. Okay, um, oh, let's go to manage videos. See if I can find it there. I don't want to start over. I'm going to figure this out, the whole live thing and how to, like, avoid all this preamble stuff. Okay, there's the video. Now I, I got to put a heading in. It's Happy Resurrection Day. Happy Resurrection. Did I spell that right? Day. And um, uh, let's see here. I have to make it. Make it public. Let's do that. Let's save. Uh-oh, let's save it. So it's public, but I have to, let's see, go here and do this. Almost done, you all. All right. And all right. Oh, let me put a title in. I got to do a title. What does the blood mean to you? What does the cross mean to you? Let's see. What does the cross mean to you? Okay, um, that's kind of not totally, well, let's see here, um, let's go. All right, that's good. That suffice for now. All right, you all. Oh, hold on. I have to go to the video now. <laughs> it's 820 in my neck of the woods, California time, a beautiful sunny morning. Depending on where you are at, the time may be different. It might be night. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day, you all. It's a, once again, a beautiful morning. Ah, it's the day our Lord rose from the grave. Do you know what that mean? Okay, I got to find the video now. You guys, if you're able to leave a comment, guys, oh, let's turn this leave, down. Leave comment, I'm live. Able, let's turn this down. Yeah, let me turn it down. Don't need an echo of my voice. If you are able to leave a comment, leave a comment. All right, and let me know what does the cross, what does the blood mean to you? What does it represent in your life? I want to go ahead and get started reading scripture. We will go to church later today. I, After this video, I'm going to get out there and get my jog out the way. It's a beautiful morning. Good morning, Sherry. Let me know where you're from and go ahead and let me know what does the cross, what does the blood mean to you? You guys, it's everything to me. And we got to take it personal, right? Because Jesus, his death and resurrection was personal. He took it personal for us and we got to take it personal. So let me know what, what does it mean to you? Sherry, she... Sherry Cooper, she's from Tennessee. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> Thank you for joining this beautiful day, a day that we commemorate his life, his death, his resurrection, you know what, and his ascension. Yeah, let me read some scriptures, you all. And I, look, get in your word, get in your word. It's, it's not too late, right, to even get in your word concerning Easter. But I am going to read, why did I choose Mark? Okay, let me turn. Let me turn and read from Luke. And I'm going to read Luke 24, 
Starting at, let's see, you know, verse one, why not? Now, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. He is not here. He is risen. He is not here. He is risen. For us Christians, this day, this holy day, it's the pinnacle of our faith. Of course, he had to be born. But if he was born, died, and didn't rise, our faith is in vain. But because we have the testimony of many, right? And let me, uh, let's see. Let me read another passage of scripture because Jesus, after he rose from the dead, he appeared for 40 days to many people. And we find that, let's see, I think in the book of Acts, let's see here. So this is Acts chapter one. And I'm going to start at verse three. And I hope you guys, can you see this? Okay, it says, to whom he also, wait, let me just go back to verse, let me go to verse one. The former, the former account I made, O Theopolis, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to his apostles whom he had chosen to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom? Should I? Okay, I'll just finish reading. Restore the kingdom to Israel. And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons, which the father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Jesus, after he rose from the dead, he presented himself. He showed himself for 40 days after he had died and was risen. He appeared to many different people for 40. And the Bible don't give an account of everyone he appeared to. The Bible states infallible proof, people, that he rose. That Jesus rose from the dead. You know, I prayed this morning and something just hit my spirit. Mm, mm, mm. You see, he went way deep down, y'all. There's other verses that talks about he went down to the great. He went down to hell. See, something went down. Oh, Mary Jade, Mary uh, Blige sang that song. I'm going down. I'm going. But Jesus went down. He went to the depth of hell and conquered death, people. Oh, it was some earthquakes. It was some trembling. 
It was a war with the devil. He took the sting out of death when he rose from the dead people. What does the blood, what does the cross mean to you? He conquered death in the flesh. God did not let his soul see corruption. Remember when Jesus was on the cross? Or when he prayed before he went to the cross, take this cup from me. He was in the flesh. Take this cup from me, but let your will be done. The devil wanted Christ to see corruption. He wanted his body to decay. He did not want him to rise from the dead because his rising from the dead. That's my question. What does it mean to you? What does that cross mean to you? What does that blood mean to you? The devil with all the power and all his 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 demons, they tried to prevent Christ from rising from the dead. But the Bible states he did not see decay. And you know what? Let me finish reading. Hold on. Hold on. Because see, this is where he's at, right? He not only rose from the dead, but now I'm in the book of Mark. And the book of Mark states, I'm going to start from verse 16. And this is what Jesus proclaimed. See, he told his apostles and disciples this, but he's telling us to do this as well. Verse 15 states, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe and my name, they will cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will fully recover. So then after the Lord had spoken them, spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and set down at the right hand of God. He was received up into heaven and set down at the right hand of God where he remains to this day. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. Can somebody say amen? Jesus is at the right hand of God. What does the cross, what does his blood mean to you? Thank you, Lord. I was thanking the Lord this morning that he did not let his son see decay. Hallelujah. And rose him from the dead. Okay, let me get started, y'all. The obvious, what does the the cross and where's my cross? Okay, so this one I dropped, right? It's missing. I still have the other part. <laughs> my cross right here. Let me grab a rubber stamp because we're crafters, right? I was working with this stamp yesterday. Okay, let me come to the comments. Denise. Hello, Denise. The cross represents God's love for you and it's everything for me. God's blessing. Love. Love you and inspiration. Thank you so much, Denise. Thank you. She states the cross represents God's love for all and it's everything to her. It's everything to me. Amen. And she also states because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Amen. I love that song because he lives. God sent his son. Amen. And Gail states, amen. And Sherry, amen. Amen, amen, amen. So I played with this cross yesterday. And where's the other cross? I did a couple of postcards that I mailed out. Okay, I, I have, I got some crosses. And the other one I played with yesterday, you know, I'm just going to leave this one right here, right? In this video, I am going to cut out some crosses. I do that time to time. But I couldn't find my crosses I cut out before. And it, it it's Easter. And I figured, you know what? Why not? I'm going to cut out some more crosses. So the cross, re the blood represents love, right? As Denise stated, it's everything. Let's take it personal, even more personal, you guys. What does that blood mean? How, how, what has the blood did for you in your life? Right? Think about it. Get deep with it. Let me share 
some 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 things the cross represents to me. I actually um, was journaling about it because I'm like, I need to take I, I want it. It's everything to me, Lord. But. I want to be able to articulate like exactly some things I'm going through today. What it means to me in relations to what God has done for me. Not just in my past, but as of as of late. Right. So let me get through some things that we all know what the cross represents love of course salvation people right salvation eternal life we know it represents forgiveness let me talk about forgiveness for a second people it is a blessing to be forgiven it is a blessing to be forgiven and not you know let me just share this should i share this i'm gonna share this i'm gonna share this the power of forgiveness, right? And not just from God, but from other people. My mother, she passed away 30, 30 something years ago. And let me share this die with you all. This one is by Sizzix. It's a sterile die. It's called Cross Ornate 2. I love my sterile dies. They cut through any and everything. And this one is discontinued. You can find it. It's not a lot of these available at any given time, but you might be able to find it um, from one of the resale sites. But my mom passed away. I was 17 years old and she died suddenly. And I didn't have a chance to tell her, like, just forgive me, just I'm sorry. And I don't know if something I don't think I was mad at her or she was mad at me, but I just wanted, you know, I just wanted to, to, to clear my heart and I don't want to start crying right now, but she, back then she, um, she was on life support for three days. She was really dead already. Right. But they had her on life support. But anyway, I remember I had prayed a prayer and, um, I was just like, I just want you to forgive me. And I had a dream. No, no, in a dream. Okay, let me get it right because it's it has been a long time and now my mind is kind of going everywhere. Let's see. Oh, I had a dream. And in the dream, I asked my mom to forgive me. That's what it was. I had a dream. I asked her to forgive me. And I I didn't get an answer in the dream. And I don't know if it was about, she passed away the third day. We pulled the plug because she was already brain dead. And about, I don't know if it was a week later, two weeks later, a month later, I, I, I don't know. I was outside of our family home watering the grass. And someone who knew my mom and um, she knew me, but it, I didn't really know her a whole lot. She was a member of the church and I wasn't really into church, but I knew my mom, she knew my family. She had roots with my family. She was passing by to go to work and I should have cut this one out twice because this is not cardstock. This is actually canvas and it has some intricate parts. And if I would have sent it through twice, like I'm not going to be able to pull well, I got to pull it off. Okay, like that. You see the frame because that's, this is a, a, a fabric here. But look how pretty that is. And I could use either side. So anyway, I, um, she stopped in the middle of the street and she was talking to me. And she said, now I'm about to get a little spooky for some people. Some may not believe in this, but she stopped and she said, your mom's spirit came to me and told me that she forgive you. And people, if I told you I hadn't seen this woman, I didn't talk to this woman. And just out the blue, she stopped and said that she had she didn't know what was on my heart. She didn't know I had that dream. That I asked my mom to forgive me and I never got an answer. 
And then she stops and she says these things to me. People, I knew that was the Lord. And that was 30 something years ago. And let me tell you, I have never walked in condemnation. I have never walked feeling guilty. That is the power of the cross. Forgiveness is what the cross means to me, to know that you are forgiven. Now, did it need, did I need her to tell me that, to know I was forgiven? At that time, I don't know if I needed that. I don't remember if I was at peace or not. But I know what was in my heart. I know the dream I had. And I know what this woman out the blue just pulled up. I happened to be watering the grass when she was passing by to go to work. And she stopped in the middle of the street to give me those words. The cross is forgiveness. You don't have to walk around in condemnation if you have confessed to God. If you have confessed to to if you have asked for forgiveness, you don't have to walk around in condemnation. Okay, let me come to the comments. Denise stated, "Oh, I feel you. My mother passed away 36 years ago. I was 22 on December 15th. God has blessed me to get through such a difficult time." Amen. I was 17, Denise, and uh, my mom actually uh, died Christmas Day. No, uh, Christmas Eve. That's when, well, that's when we pull the plug. But people, I have never walked in any condemnation at all. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus. Because guilt, walking around in guilt, can call it, it can kill you. It can destroy you when you have that consciousness. But the blood represents a conscious free mind. Thank you, Lord. Okay, you guys, what does the cross, what does it represent to you? What does it mean to you? Denise states, yes, that was Jesus sent that lady. He did. He did. <laughs> the Lord knew what I needed. And people, to this day, I'm still talking about that because I know that was the Lord. But once again, only the cross could have provided that to me. There is peace in the cross. Think about who, and I don't know all the different, you know, I, I can't think, I can't think. Look, Jesus makes sense to me. I often pray this prayer to God. It, the plan of redemption and salvation, it makes perfect sense to me. From the, the beginning with Adam and Eve, the fall and the need to be redeemed, the need, the need to be forgiven, and it can only come through the blood of God's son. It, all the puzzles fit perfectly together. All the T's are, are, are what they say, the, the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. I have no questions absolutely no doubt this story and it's more than a story but God's plan of redemption has no loopholes in it it's there's no red tape right I have no questions it makes sense that his son needed to be born in a body die and rise from the dead it makes sense. Do it make sense to you all? What does the cross, what does the cross mean to you? So I have a cross right here. And then I have this one. And then I have this one. And I could use either side, but this is really the, the side here. And this is specialty paper, you all, that I use. I like to bring it out when I'm working on important things because this is discontinued and it's like an impossible find. Years ago, like 15, has it been 15, maybe 20 years? Okay, I I wanted to um have my own online craft store. So I got my license, the business license and all that, and I ordered from this one company. I can't think of the name, but they they were into uh covers for books. They crossed over into the scrapbooking world for a for a short period of time. And they offered these beautiful papers and I bought them in bulk. 
of course, I never did open my online store, but I had a lot of their papers. So that's what I'm using. And their papers, because they come from the the, the world of making covers for um, a lot of different companies, book covers, that different. They specialize in different types of materials and cloths for books. And they brought that over to the, the craft world. So these papers are specialty papers. You know what? Let me... Um, I've shown this, these papers several times before, and they have many different types, many. Like this right here is a canvas. This this is not cardstock. It, it feels like a hybrid between fabric and paper, but you can stamp, stitch. This is canvas. I had a, a, a little business. I was making a handmade, homemade journals back when I first started crafting in 04. So I had gotten these canvas papers because I used to print photos on the canvas paper to customize my journals for my customers. As a matter of fact, hold on. I've shared this before, not often, but this right here. This is a photo of me I took back in the day. This is how my journals looked. And I made this one back. Do I have a date? I think about, I made this in 2000 and was it seven? Oh my goodness. I, <laughs> no, I'm reading this you all. <laughs> yeah, I think I made, I made this in 2007, according to what's written here. But anyway, um, that's that. Back to what does the cross? I got to cut some more paper. I want some spring colors. Let's do that one. Let's do the green. Okay. What else does the cross symbolize? What does it represent? What does it mean? Or what does the blood mean to you? All right. Let's come to comments. Hi, Gail. Nice to have you. And she says, love, unquestioning the love that is forever. And it is because the cross means eternal life, people. This life will cease. I know we don't feel like it will because we might have good health and we're strong and we're alive and we can think and we can hear, we can see, we can feel. But this life will cease. The cross is hope, hope for eternal life. Where's my scissors at? Where will you spend eternity? Because this life is not gonna last forever. I'm gonna use Tim Holtz dies, or this die for the next. It's discontinued, but you can find this one. I do see it. And let's do, what color? Let's do this one for Tim Holtz. So the cross represents eternal life. You guys, do you know what a blessing eternal life is? Because this life, for many people, it's depressing, distressing, traumatic. If you are fortunate and blessed where you're at to have peace, to have all your basic needs met, to live in safety, to have security. You know, many people in the world don't have that. Their reality of this life, they want it, they, they want life to end. Thank you, Lord, for offering a refuge, an eternal refuge. There is another life, eternal life, people. And the Bible talks about that life. There's no need for the sun in that life. Because Jesus will be the light. It's a place where the streets, they say, are paved with gold. Paved with gold. It's a place where there's no more death, no more suffering, no more devil, no more lies, deception, no more pain, no more death. That is what the cross promises those who believe what a blessing we will behold him we will see him face to face we can't even comprehend that type of life 
It's inexpressible. But that is the hope. That is the promise of the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No matter what you go through in this life, and I know it's hard to think about the next life when we're living, you know, in this life. It's about the here and the now, but I take comfort in knowing one day I'm going to see my loved ones again. I'm going to see Jesus first and foremost, but I'm going to see my loved ones again. That has to give you, you know, a peace of mind knowing that your saved loved ones, they're in the arms of Jesus. That's how we can make it through losing loved ones in this life, right? Because we have the hope. We have the assurance. We know where they are at. There was a commercial that used to come on when I was growing up. It was for the parents. And it came on at 10 o'clock. Do you know where your children are at? Something like that. Do you know where your children are at? If you have lost a child, lost a parent, a sibling, you have the assurance of Christ, that cross. You know where they are at. That is a peace of mind, people. Who can offer that peace of mind? Okay, this, these two are from Tim Holtz. From his stuff. Let me compare it to, I'm going to move these right here and just lay it here, right? Now I do have, next I'm going to work with some, um, some wafer thin dies. Ugh, got this big old binder right here. Right there. And let's see here. Okay, come to the comments. And you guys, this chat, like right now, it's showing that it's disconnected on my end. There might be a delay in me getting your chat messages. I might not even see some of your chat messages until this video ends and it processes. Um, so just, it's live technology and it's not perfect. Gail states, that's going to be a great reunion. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> and to walk around heaven? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And then Denise states, yes, it's going to be a party. Amen. It is, people. A party. Lana Richie sang the song all night long. But this party is going to be all life long, right? <laughs> It will not cease. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. What does the cross, what does that blood represent to you? Okay, what else? Let's see here. Uh, you know, the cross represents, here's some crosses right here. Do I want to play with these? The, the cross represents redemption. A lot of people in this life, we hear about certain things on the news and I'm looking at these squirrels. It's two squirrels out here. They have been running back and forth on my, um, like right now one is running, well, actually walking. They're walking along the gate. They, they're so cute. <laughs> I'm glad my dogs are not back there. They're in the garage right now, but they're so cute. It's springtime that, you know, they're celebrating his resurrection too, because it's hope for the animals as well. They're tired of dying. They are tired of being mistreated. There's a scripture that talks about the world is groaning in aches and pains, right? Waiting for their redemption. Waiting for their redemption. Waiting for Christ to return and put an end to all this foolishness, all the death and destruction, put an end to the enemy. These animals, yep, rejoice that everything that has breath praise the Lord. And they know their maker. You can best believe they know their maker. This squirrel is so cute. Now it went over to the other neighbor's gate a little bit higher. I don't see that second one though. Okay, I have, let's see. I should have some more crosses. Yep, back here. And I have more than this that I haven't put in this binder. You guys, I have missed the maybe the, last year, I want to say. I've not shopped from HSN. I totally missed all the craft shows that just came out. I have my DVR set to record, but 
I just missed it. This is Anna Griffin. She's come out with um, at least two, if not three. I should have all of hers. But there's a collection I want to play with that I love. Let's see. Is this it? Got some spell binders. This one here is one of my favorite. Let me stick my hands in here. I love this one here. I'm going to cut out that one. And let's take out, let's play with this set. I'm going to put this on the ground over here. But the cross represents redemption. There's a lot of children, a lot of people who don't make the news, right? They're forgotten. They're nameless. They're voiceless. They really experience. There's a book in the Bible called Lamentations. Oh, people. Many of us will never know that. The body wasn't designed. The mind wasn't designed to endure that. But a lot of people, they're experiencing that. But that cross represents redemption or to be redeemed. We have been bought, people, with a price, right? You know how you can buy something? You can order it but never pick it up? You haven't redeemed it if you didn't pick it up. But that cross, we were bought with the blood of Jesus. And as sure as I am talking right now, Jesus will make his return and redeem us. Just like God redeemed Jesus from the grave, he did not let him see decay or corruption. Jesus will make his return, people, and he is going to redeem us. No one who is saved will be left behind. And why do my alarm want to come on right now? I don't know if you guys hear that, but hold on. Oh, goodness. You guys, give me a second. You might have seen my hands, experienced a little shake, shake. I have my phone on, do not disturb. You know, that was an eBay. That was a, an alarm for eBay. A bid from a long time ago. I need to just shut off. <laughs> but um, yes, we're going to be redeemed, people. We are not going to be left behind. Everybody to God has a voice. He hears everybody. He sees the tears. No one is forgotten or forsaken with God. I'm pulling in my Anna Griffin. because I'm going to be using her, her machine, the mink machine, to, to cut out this die. And let's see here. Hi, Kathy. Happy Resurrection Day, friends, she states. And she states, amen. Come on, y'all. Let me know what else. What does the blood, what, what does that cross mean to you what does it represent to you i'm going to use this pretty pink paper because it is springtime you guys we're having a beautiful spring we're actually gonna we're in 70s today and i think tuesday we're going to be 85 now that's just too hot but i'm not complaining because we're going to go back down in the 70s and 60s but we've had a glory for the first time in a long time because I stopped looking forward to spring because it would just turn in fall to summer. That's what it felt like. But we have had a tight wind type weather. We've had beautiful weather. It feels like spring. And I think it has a lot to do with all the rains we've got. We had a beautiful fall. We had a beautiful winter. And now we have a we're having a beautiful spring. So it's beautiful outside. Okay. What you guys got planned today? We're going to go to church. I'm going to go run after this video. And we're going to get ready for church a little after. And then tonight, we're going out to eat. Now, I would normally make like a full-blown holiday meal for Easter. The last couple years, I don't think I've done... I don't remember what I did last year, but we are going out to eat. I haven't been to Red Lobster in a long time. We may go there. We may do Olive Garden. Um, but we're we're going out as a family. So I look forward to that. Are you guys cooking? What are you doing? Um, 
it's been well since the pandemic for a while for several years we were spending easter in bakersfield with my paternal aunts but since the pandemic we haven't been there and i thought to i don't know if they're cooking this year because they're you know they're older and they moved in with a son so i didn't even call i need to call today i don't know if they if they actually cooked but the best food the best food ever okay let's see here pop this out and this is once again specialty paper with regular cardstock i would have gotten more embossing you know what let me cut this out with regular cardstock and do i have all of my shims there because this cross is really pretty let's see uh oh you guys what does the cross represent what does it mean what does it mean to you just going to use plain white cardstock let's do this again oh you know what let me get the brush what else does the cross mean to me the cross means to me you guys gender equality yes indeed it's not by coincidence a lot of dealings jesus had was with women the woman at the well the woman um the demon possessed woman it was women at the cross it was women he appeared to first right they went to the tomb that cross represents gender equality in christ jesus there is no jew there is no gentile right there's no black there's no white there's no democrat there's no republican there is right and wrong right if you are right with god It don't matter how you look, where you come from, what language you speak, how much money you have or don't have. We are all one. And women, let's send this through. Because of the sin of Eve in the garden, y'all, we had it pretty tough. And when I say pretty tough, I mean pretty tough with, well, I often think, if you know the Old Testament, only a man could be a priest. Women, by virtue of our sex, could not serve in the temple in that way. If you were on your period, could you go to church? You had to be isolated because you were unclean. And there, men could be unclean too if you had a certain disease, if you had a discharge. But y'all know every month women have periods. And to be unclean because of something that naturally happens. You had a baby, you were, you had to isolate for a while. But what really get, gets me thinking is by virtue of our sex, because we're female, we could never serve as a priest before God. Jesus makes that right. Because there's no male or female in God. He makes it right, people. Even in Jesus' days, the Jews did not associate with the Gentiles. For Jesus to talk to a woman was, was shunned. For men to talk to women, because women had their place. It's not a coincidence. Jesus had a lot of dealings, positive dealings. He was, he was a trailblazer, you all, a pioneer in women's rights. I know we don't read about that in the textbooks and the history books, and he gets no credit, but he was a trailblazer when it comes to women having equal rights. That's what that cross represents to me. Equality, gender equality. Okay, do you see the embossing a little better? 
The cross, you all. The cross. Can you see that? And Crafty Kim states, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Let's see. I grabbed that cross. Let's see. Where is this one at? I must have took this one. Oh, here it is. This is Anna Griffin right here. So are you guys cooking? What are you doing? Going to go out to eat? Look, are you going to have a bowl of cereal? <laughs> Keep it light. Okay, I want to... I want a green cross. Let's do this. Just like that. Okay, what else does the cross mean? Let's see here. The cross, the cross also means to me, and I can't sum it up in one word, but the cross means we can worship God anywhere. You guys know that, but let me put it in perspective. Because before Jesus, if you wanted to worship God, you had to go to the temple in Jerusalem. And I don't recall if the temple was even, no, it was there. It was there. At some point, I think it got destroyed, but it was there. But if you wanted to find God, you had to go there. That's where the ark was. But that cross means you can worship God. You can be on the moon. You could be in a, in a sub submarine deep down in the depths of the water. You could be in prison. Hallelujah. The hospital bed. And wor worship God. Find God right there. That's what that cross means. It transcends time zones and spaces distance you can worship god and find god right now no matter where you are you have instant connection to him it's faster than at&t long distance y'all faster you can get in contact with him faster than any any internet connection that's what that cross affords. What a blessing that is. Can somebody say amen for the truth? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If Jesus did not die and rise from the dead, we wouldn't have that. We wouldn't have it. But that's what the cross represents. We can worship God in spirit and in truth. And this is what this cross looks like. Now, I used the that specialty paper so you don't see the, all the embossing. It's there. And, you know, if I used my other machine, the Crafter's Companion, I would have got a deeper embossing. Even with this paper. But it's still beautiful. Now, what else does his blood mean? I don't know about y'all, but who needs and who's ever needed some protection in life? I know I have. And I don't say that lightly. That blood represents protection. Now, I know you guys, none of us are exempt as long as we are in this sinful body that will die, right? We are going to be subject to the things that happens to people in the body up, up until death. Jesus suffered. That cross represents suffering. We at times will suffer in this life. We're going to grieve. We're going to go through things in life. But in going through those things in life, 
I like to think, I know what God has done for me. He has shown how he has protected me. But people, there are ways that God has protected us that we are oblivious to. And when I speak of protection too, I'm talking about the devil. Like in the book of Job, the devil needs permission, people. When God has a hedge of protection around you, that's what the blood offers, protection. Protection. I thank, Lord, thank you. I don't even want to shout right now thinking about how the Lord has, because I take that one very personal. It's like the testimony of my life, of my youth, of my life. I never want to forget about that. Some of you can relate to it. I'm talking about life and death, people. That's what I'm talking about. That's how personal I take that. That cross represents protection. And I do plead the blood of Jesus even for protection now over my family, over myself. What does the cross mean to you? What does the blood represent to you? Now this dye, it's a Doris dye, which is no longer in business. Oh, Love my Doris dyes. And let's cut this one down. I will be using these crosses in my journals. Um, I made a couple of, you guys, it is national. It is national poetry month. It's national card making month. And it's also national letter writing month. I have a video coming your way, Lord willing, next week. That's going to encompass encompass all those things. <laughs> a poem, a letter, not a card though, not a card. But anyway, I sent off something yesterday and I was looking through my stash for some die cut crosses because I like to include crosses when I remember But anyway, you guys stay tuned for, I'm going to share a poem I wrote years ago. Beautiful. It's for all the ladies, all the ladies, young and old. All right. I got something from the Lord for you all. So you all stay tuned. Okay. Ooh. This one embossed better than the other ones. It's still fainter than if I used cardstock, but that's pretty, right? Okay, you guys, what does the, the cross represent? It represents purification. Y'all, we stanky, we dirty. We filthy rags, if you don't know it. Now, I know some of you might be offended by that because you're holier than thou, but let me, let me, let me bring you down to planet Earth. You stank. Right? Because sin stinks. And without the blood of Jesus, y'all, that purifying blood that makes us clean and presentable to God, mm, God don't have no association with anything that's stinky and filthy. You know, in the Old Testament, when he came down to visit his people on this particular occasion, I, I, I always think about that because it was so funny to me. In the Old Testament, the King James Version, doo-doo was rendered dung, D-U-N-G, right? And God told his people, clean up the camp, get rid of the dung, because he was coming down to visit his people. <clears throat> that's probably where that saying comes from, godliness is the next thing to holiness it probably came i don't know if it did but it probably came from the story of when god came down to visit his people he said get rid of the dung because he can't he, he can't be around that nowhere near close to it they also had to purify themselves they had to wash their clothes they had to wash their bodies the one thing they couldn't do though and this is what the cross that's why the cross is so important people 
You know, they could have cleaned their clothes, cleaned their face, did all that. But they could do all that and still have a nasty heart. They were clean on the outward. They had their houses clean. And by the way, that phrase, whole, uh, uh, godly, uh, clean, cleanliness, that's what it is. Cleanliness is the next thing that godliness, that's so far from the truth. Whoever, who, who started that lie? Because I hear people quote it all the time. And I thought about it recently. I'm like, heck no. Cleanliness is the closest thing to godliness. No, you can be clean on the outside, have a spick and span home. And your heart be so filthy and nasty. But see, Jesus, he purifies. His blood purifies. Thank you, Jesus. Better than Tide. Better than bleach. Stronger than anything you can buy on the market and some. You need the blood of Christ to purify you and make you clean and make you acceptable to God. Only his blood can do it. So that cross represents purification and you need it daily. Like you need Dawn to wash your, your dishes and you need Dove for your face. People, we need the blood of Christ to take off the daily grime and stains, stains of sin from this life. We need it. We need to be constantly washed before God because we are sinners in this body. I put no confidence in my flesh. I'm a sinner. Don't call me a prophet, a prophetess. Don't call me a, 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 a you know, all these fancy titles. One thing you can call me though is a sinner because that I am. I never want to get it twisted. Never want to think I'm more than what I am. I'm a sinner. I deserve that. And I need the blood of Christ to cleanse me all the time, to, to, to put a layer, right? A layer on me so I can come up against the, the, the tactics and strategies and ammunition of the enemy. He gets in the mind too, people. We can sin in our minds. Jesus made that clear. You think about sleeping with another person, you have committed adultery in your mind. Though you may have never do it in the physical act, now in your mind, you are unclean and unclean before God. We need the purifying blood of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So the cross, the blood represents purification. Okay. The next, the next dot. Right, let's see. I want to use... You know what? I'm going to grab a punch, too. How about that? Let me put this back because I'm known for losing stuff. I had this right here. Let's see. I want to make sure I put them. Okay, this is Anna Griffin. It goes with that. Okay, let's see. Oh, this one here. This is an old Spellbinders. And you guys, I, I had to search far and wide for this one. I got this one, I think, from Europe. It's been several years, but this is an older... You know what? Let's cut this one out because this one has the garment. Oh, yeah, I love this one because... Okay, let's just cut it out. And this might be my last one, you all. Let's see. Any comments? All right, let's see. What type of paper do I want to use for this one? I don't have the packaging. I don't think. If I have it, I don't have it with in this particular sleeve. But yeah, I had to get this one um, way, like I said, I think it came from Europe or maybe Australia. All right. Okay. So Felicia, what, what paper do you want to use? Uh, let's see here. Did I use, I used pink. I used green. Oh, you know what? Let's use purple. I did use this one, but I want to use, I want a two-tone. So I want this color and let's see here. I got that color. Now I want to do pink. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Felicia, don't get stuck. Don't think, create. <laughs> That's my motto, you all. Don't think, create. 
Okay, I'm just going to do it. Let's do this. I am going to cut out all of these these cuts here. Now, you guys, what else the cross means to me? Mm, Y'all. This next one right here. And some of you... Oh, you know what? Before I get to that one, let me talk about this one. And where's the die? Oh, the, the cover. The cross means freedom to me. When I look at that cross, I look at, I, I think of freedom. Being African-American and knowing what my ancestors, what my grandma went through, right? Knowing that we come from slavery and still suffering the effects of slavery. The Bible was used, the scriptures was used, Jesus was used to enslave people, totally out of context, right? But that cross, that cross represents equality, as I stated before, but freedom. There is no slave in Christ Jesus. It represents emancipation, right? Represents freedom. And I thank God for that. It was only the, the enslaved people, they called on Jesus. They had a faith unlike anybody's faith to be subjected onto the things they experienced and to come out even today the faith that African Americans have in America, the faith in Jesus, despite of the, the struggle, that's what that cross represents. Thank you, Jesus. That's what it represents to me. Freedom. In addition to everything else it represents, endurance. Right, the hope, the the faith, the faith. Thank you, Lord. Okay, I need to cut. I'm gonna use pink. So let's do that. Let's cut this out. As I bring this to the to a close, y'all. I wasn't gonna do a live video, but I'm like, if I have to do a if I do a regular video, I have to edit and I, no. And then I would not have done it. I'm like, Satan, you a lie. This is one of the most, outside of his birth, the most important day event for me. So I had to come live. Okay, what else does his blood, does the cross represent? Uh-oh. Alicia, what you doing? And I don't... I have two left that I can think of, but this next one, I don't know if I can describe it in one, just with one word, but I read that Jesus is coming back. And did I read that Jesus told... I think I read that passage where uh, Jesus told the disciples to wait yeah, I did read it. John baptized with water, but there's going to be a baptize, a bat, yeah, a baptizing of fire, but to wait. And we know 40 days from now, you guys, we don't really celebrate, like there's no holiday for the, the Pentecost, but 40 days from now, the scripture. And I forget which chapter in the Old Testament it comes from, but there's a promise that God made back then that he would pour out his spirit on all flesh. Oh, I can talk about that right now and just close this video out because that's so deep, y'all. But we saw the, the fulfillment of the beginning of the fulfillment of that during Pentecost. Oh, you guys, if you really know what that means. That's a whole message, a whole sermon by itself. But anyway, what Jesus rising from the, the dead, 
victory in his hands. He promised the Holy Ghost. Wait, the Holy Ghost. When I see that the, the cross and I think about it, I think about, look, the reason why, one reason at least why God will never forsake us. He makes that promise. I will never leave you nor forsake you. People, that is that no matter. I don't care if you feel like God isn't there. I'm going I'm to tell you why he's always there. Because through the cross, he sent the promise of the Holy Ghost. Through the cross, he sent the promise of the Holy Ghost. We have the Holy Ghost with us 24 hours a day. And if the Holy Ghost is with us 24 hours a day, we are never forsaken. We are never without God. Remember how I stated earlier, the cross represents we can serve God anywhere, anywhere. Back then they had to go to the temple to worship God. Back then they didn't have God's spirit, people. That's why they had to go find him in the temple as if the God of the universe can be restricted to a temple. I got a message for y'all, but not in this video because it's about the cross. But because of the cross, because of his resurrection, his ascension, we have those who are saved got the Holy Ghost. Imagine life without the Holy Ghost. If God did not send his spirit. See, because it's one thing for Christ to die and rise and go to heaven. But without the Holy Ghost, we're doomed. Without the Holy Ghost, this world would be like the days of Noah. When every thought was wicked before God. The Bible states every thought was wicked before God to the point God repented that he had made man. So what did he do? He went in there. He destroyed everything, everything except Noah and whoever was in that boat. Without the Holy Ghost people, we succumb to the devil. We succumb to sin and every thought is wicked all the day long. Because that's how it was in the days of Noah. But God sent his Holy Spirit, people. That's why we love him and we can praise him. Despite of living in a, the world of the dying. I know in church we testify. I thank God for the land, for being here in the land of the living. No, we are in the land of the dying. This world will cease to exist. We're dying whether or not we know it. Every breath we take, we are closer to death. And it can end at any moment. But that cross represents the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost that enables me right now to give God the glory. And for you too. It's the Holy Ghost that brings it to my remembrance, helps me articulate it. It's the Holy Ghost. If we didn't have the Holy Ghost, you guys, we would succumb to the evils of this world. Can somebody thank God for the precious gift of the Holy Ghost? And do not quench the spirit of God. Oh, that's another message too. Because people, it's a precious gift. He didn't have to send it. But because he loved us, redemption wouldn't be complete without the gift of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Lord. Okay, I'm going to cut this out and then give you guys one more, one more, uh, what do I call these? I don't know what to call it. <laughs> I got one more for you. Probably got more than that. But it's now 9.30. Ooh, I got to plug up my computer because it's it's going to go dead. You know, it shows a battery, but it's so old and it's not being updated no more. It's a Chromebook. They stopped updating it two years ago, but it still worked. But certain aspects just don't work. Like I can't use Pinterest on this. 
I just refuse to buy a, a new Chromebook. <laughs> so anyway, it'll show a charge of maybe 30% and then just die on me. Yeah. Wait a minute. Did I not? Y'all, wait. I wasn't paying attention. Did I have the cover on this? Okay, I guess I did. All right. So you guys, this last one I can think of right now, what the blood represents, what the cross represents to me. <sighs> did you guys remember that movie uh, about um, his death and yeah, his death, the passion. It was so graphic. It was so moving. I've only seen that movie once. And, and it's because, I mean, they did a fantastic job demonstrating what Christ went through. As ugly as that whole experience was, when I look at the cross, I see beauty. I do. I see beauty beauty as bloody as it got i see beauty what the cross re represents to me people is beauty i don't care how you look in this life i don't care if you were told you are ugly if you feel like you are misbuilt, too dark, too light, too skinny, too fat, nose too big, lips too big, not big enough, feet too big, I don't care, cellulite, wrinkles, I don't care what it is, people. Because this life will have you thinking that you are ugly and you need to conform. But I am here to tell you, if you are saved, you ain't nothing but beautiful to God. You are beautiful to God just as you are. Oh, I got a whole, I'm writing about that in my, in, in my book, people. You are beautiful to God. Beautiful to him. Beautiful. The blood makes you beautiful to God. And as long as you are beautiful to God, it don't matter what nobody else think. Don't even matter what you think. That cross represents beautifulness. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let me grab a piece of paper because I want to assemble. It's so fitting to end this video with this die because I, this is the most unique cross I have. And it's because, <laughs> look at that, right? It's because of, what do you, what is this called, you guys? I just, I love this. I could play with it that, that way or I don't feel like I'm using that right. Darn it, I wish I had the, how, let's see, not like that. Let's see. I don't feel like I have this positioned right. But anyway, it's the most unique die because it has, I can't think of what that's called, but I love that, but it's not right. <laughs> okay. You guys, I think my, the comments disconnected. Oh, you know what? Let me refresh the page. I got to remember to do that because I haven't had a comment in 15 minutes or so. And let's see if that, let's see. You guys, I think the chat has, I, I think it, I think it stopped. I'm sorry for all of you who have sent comments and the last comment I got, oh shoot, I'll get it after you all, but I'm going to conclude this video with this Spellbinders yesteryear vintage die and the cross. I, I encourage you all to spend some time with God in reflection and prayer and really look inside and take it personal. Ask yourself, write about it, journal about it, craft about it. What does the cross mean to you? What does his blood mean to you? You know, and, and, and reminisce with God. 
Conjure up some things he has done for you and praise and thank him for it. And I hope this video, I hope it's been more than a video. I hope it has blessed your soul. I hope it has ignited or reignited something in you concerning the blood of Christ. You know, in this life, we can we can become desensitized even to Jesus, even to our walk with Jesus. We can just, it can become status quo, right? To the point where you feel like, well, I don't need to read about his resurrection because I already know it. I can fall prey to that too. Like I forgot it was Easter. And I'm like, oh my, I need to go. And I really didn't want to read the, the Easter story again. That's just the flesh. But I'm like, nope, I need to read it. And of course, fell in love with it. Because your mind might think that you, you just know it already, but there's something about being refreshed and being revived in it. Don't let this day, night go by and, and you miss out. Because the blood is just as powerful today as it was when he shed it on the cross. It was a lot going on happening in the hearts and the spirits of people back then. You don't want to lose that vigor. You don't want to lose that zealousness for God. So be intentional, take time, reflect, give him the glory and just push through whatever it is. You got to push through, push through it. I want to end this, this with a little prayer, but these are my dies right here. My die cuts, I should say. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the cross. And I, I still don't see any comments coming through. Um, I, I think it, um, you know, that happens with live videos. I got a brand new phone. When I say brand new, this one, I got a new phone in November, the latest Android after not upgrading for, I think, four, four or five years because I keep the same phone. But I got that phone and wasn't able to text. And then I got a new phone just about a month ago. And this, this is the latest Android. This one came out in February and I couldn't text still, you guys. So I finally called Verizon. I dreaded calling them because I just know it's going to be a long, drawn out process. They got me up and going. So it's been about a week I've been able to text. <laughs> and why did I bring that up? I brought that up for a reason. Okay. Yeah, it's time for me to go. <laughs> Oh, hold on. I just got a comment that came through. Denise, thank you for this video. Such a blessing. You are so welcome, Denise. Thank you for your um, encouraging words. Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and end it with a short prayer, you all. And join me if you like. Father God, come before you in the name of your son, Jesus, only the name of Jesus, because it's all about the blood, Lord. It's all about the sanctified, purifying, disinfecting blood of your son, who you rose from the dead 2,000 years ago, Father God. We come before you first, Lord, knowing that we are imperfect, asking you to search us. Father God, and not if you find something, but you're, you're sure to find something, Lord. Bring it to our remembrance as we lay it before the cross of forgiveness, Father God. Thanking you that we are forgiven. We are approved. We are sanctified. We are purified. We are redeemed. Father God, we are free in Christ Jesus. And because he rose, Lord. We're going to rise to an immortality, Father God, to live with you and live forever. Lord, you know the hearts. You know the needs of your people. I pray for hope for those who need hope. They find their hope in the cross. For those who need love, they find their love in the, cr the cross, Father God. For those who need to be who need to be uh, confirmed, Father God, for those who who need self-esteem, who need who feel the need to be approved, that they find it in the cross. The cross is everything. The cross is all things that we need, Lord. Thank you for this video. Blessings to everyone out there. 
protection, Father God. Meet the needs, Father God. Fill the heart, Father God. If they don't have the Holy Ghost, send the Holy Ghost, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We say thank you. We celebrate Christ. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. All right, you all. I'm going to end this video. I want to thank you all for joining me. May you have a beautiful Easter day, Easter night, no matter where you are in God's part of the world. And may the spirit of Christ, the spirit of his death and resurrection remain in your hearts eternally. Thank you all. I appreciate you as always. Blessings. You will experience a little bit of shake shake. I'm sorry about that. You're going to see my hand. Okay, let me see if I can just end this video this way. Uh-oh, the phone might fall. All right. Thank you all for chatting and leaving comments. And you guys be blessed. Blessings!